What's up internet? In today's video I'll show you how to create a little effect I like to call the projector glitch effect and it looks a bit like this. I primarily use this effect in the travel vlogs of me in Vienna and the reason being is that I hardly shot any footage during a period in time and I had to show the passing of time to somehow save the storytelling and this is what I came up with. The first part of this tutorial will be focused on creating the assets needed for the effect and the second part is all about implementing it. So what we need to be making is this asset. We can make it digitally, but I prefer to make it in a more organic way. And for that we need some paint, a brush of your choosing and paper. Now it's up to you to paint whatever you want to paint. I'll go for some random letters or things that resemble letters. Now that you're done, take photos of all the sheets of paper and then load them into your computer. Now in order to transform this into this, we need to send them all to After Effects. The first step is to isolate the paints. We do that by masking roughly around the paint and cranking up the contrast. I'll quickly fix up all the photos. Right, with that done, create a new composition with a height of 10,000 pixels and a width of 1920, or something that suits your needs. Uh, we'll call this String Base 1. Create a new solid by pressing Command Y, make it wide and com size. This will be the background that will fill in the gaps of your photos. Now arrange the photographs in the composition in a way of your choosing. Try to arrange it in such a way that it seems like there are words written down, meaning that you must not make a giant string of paint but leave some gap in various places. Great, now duplicate the string base comp and randomize the paint once again. Create a new composition, we'll call it Film Reel and make it 1920 by 1080 and hit OK. Drag the string base comp into the timeline and animate it from bottom to top. And this is where you experiment a bit with the speed. Do the same thing for the other string base comps. Now add an adjustment layer by pressing Alt Command Y and add the invert effect. We need the background to be all black in order to properly use a blending mode in Premiere. Now we add another adjustment layer, Alt Command Y and we're gonna colorize the white panes. Add a channel mixer effect to the adjustment layer and change the values to whatever color you like to use. If you like it to be a bit more rough, you can also add some dust and scratches to your comp for extra randomness. I got this asset by googling for some free overlays. Now drop it in and change the blending mode to screen. Make sure you put it above the invert and below the colorize adjustment layer. The only thing left now is to export the comp. Uh, we send it to the media encoder. We do this in order to export with the H.264 codec because we want it to be a simple MP4. Great, we've designed a very own asset, now it's time to use it in Premiere. First cut your footage together using a hard cut and next create an adjustment layer and add it on top. Make sure it covers the transition roughly. Now we add the effect offset to it. What offset does is when you shift the center to the side or the bottom, it pushes your video down but it also reveals a copy of the frame on the other side of the frame. In my mind it sort of replicates when a projector is mid frames and you see the bottom of the new frame while also seeing the top of the previous one. Now when we animate the center offset we can create set effect. Go to the point in time where you want your effect to start and click the little stopwatch in front of the property. Now go to the end of the animation and shift the value over a bit. The nice thing about this effect is that it can be really rough. It doesn't have to line up properly because it's all part of the effect. Now we're gonna add the real asset we've just created. I'll just pick the first part of it and drag it on top of the adjustment layer. Go into Effect Controls and twirl down Opacity. This is where you can find the blending options. We'll select Screen, uh, but you can experiment with different looks if you like. 
If you want to, you can also change the position a bit to frame it in a way that best suits your shot. Uh, and now it looks like this. The only thing missing is some sound effects. I've got some sound effects linked in the description so you can download them and use them. And now we've got this. As you can see, it's not particularly hard to achieve the basics of this effect, and the more important part of this effect is actually the sound design. If you take a look at the first sequence once again, but this time without the sounds, you can really notice that it's actually all the sounds that make the effect work. So keep that in mind when you're designing your own projector effects and spend some time on these sound effects. Well guys, did you like this video? If you did, check out one of my other videos and consider subscribing because there's more to come.